40 channel points go to Enzo and Shachsumi. e6. Uh, let's play knight c3. I'm just going to play the classical stuff, just bringing this knight out to the center, putting pressure on d5. And okay, we're getting c5, the Tarash. Awesome. <laughs> Playing the Tarash against Tarash. Wow, Seth has Seth has some nerve, huh? <laughs> okay, so against this opening, there are a few ways to play it. Usually white takes on d5 immediately, just kind of trading off our c-pawn for uh, the e-pawn. And okay, black plays e takes d5, and at some point we're gonna get the exchange of uh, pawns here, and black is gonna be left with this iqp. So main move here is knight f3. This is just very typical, getting the knight out and defending this pawn. Now black probably starts developing here themselves. So the classical main line has long been to put the pawn on g3 and bishop on g2. I think it was actually Rubenstein who came up with this plan if I if I recall correctly. Yeah, Tarash and Rubenstein, I mean, were around the same time. Tarash, I assume, was playing this opening. But yeah, Rubenstein is the guy known for coming up with this um with this development scheme. We can also play bishop uh, g5 here, and I think this move is considered a little bit annoying against knight f6, but let's just stick to the classical stuff. Uh, actually, my idea for this speedrun was not to... Um, uh, not to try to like trick people in the opening and like get people to fall for like opening traps, uh, but rather just try to make like normal moves in the opening and follow what I would say are like normal opening principles and um, showing people how to kind of like structure their game in a, in a rational sense. So yeah, trying to rely very little on like concrete opening knowledge and actually just thinking about uh, typical principles. Okay, so C takes D4 here. I think this is the uh, the so-called Dubov Tarash, which I've actually haven't really faced. So this will be kind of this will be kind of new for me. I guess that's what life is like now. <laughs> you gotta face players who are on the chessable and learning, learning the lines. I should make a YouTube series on each rating range and what those people should follow and learn. Yeah, that's kind of one of the ideas behind this. It's, um, well, after like I do the series is to maybe try to, uh, try to come up with some guidelines, like what every level should should be focusing on. So I don't know what the, the theory recommends here. Um, I would imagine that knight b3 and knight takes c6 are both reasonable options for white. Um, the drawback to knight b3 is that I feel like the knight is not, just not super well placed. Although we do have this plan of like knight a4 and bringing one of our knights to uh, to c5. That definitely makes sense. Uh, but we can also take on c6 and kind of play against this structure. And I, I often like doing that. So yeah, let me take on c6 here. Right. So now we're just going to kind of play against uh, the weak C pawn. We did help black structure, but it's not like the end of the story because, okay, D5 is solid, but now the C pawn is going to be, is going to be a problem. So question is where to put the bishop. We can go bishop G5, but then that will run into H6. Not sure if we really want to give up the bishop, but we can play B3 and put the bishop on B2, which looks quite, um, Quite reasonable to be honest. Uh, let me, yeah, let's keep it simple. 
This move kind of just supports white's plan here. All right, bishop goes to b2, knight can jump to a4, rook goes to c1, hitting uh, the c6 pawn, and then knight comes to c5. It's actually kind of classic, classic Rubenstein. Uh, there's a well-known game where he, he follows this plan. I think he goes knight a4, bishop e3 actually, rook c1, bishop c5, and then trades off dark squared bishops, puts his knight on c5, puts his queen on d4, rook fd1, I mean, just like gorgeous, gorgeous grind. I'm sure it's in uh, the first Gelfand book or something. So for black, it's important to create active play. Uh, which is not always so obvious how to do that. That's true. If we break with e4, then one day the c pawn will be isolated as well. Do you start to devise plans to put pressure on the C-pawn or do you worry about that later? That's all I've been talking about for the last three minutes. <laughs> Maybe you just got here, but all, all I've been saying is like, oh, things are going to the uh, <laughs> to the C-file. Okay, bishop a6. Uh, that looks like a good move. So let's challenge uh, bishop on a4, on, <laughs> on c5, and a4. Telling Moose, how's it going? Okay, Bishop B6. Well, I think we just want to develop this guy either here or here. Bishop A3, rookie A. I'll have to defend this guy somehow. I think I'd rather have the Bishop on B2 in this position. I don't know, I just get the feeling that it makes sense to just keep this pressure on the... Uh, on the diagonal and on rookie a we can find some way of defending the uh the epon Is there a reason to start with knight a4 or bishop b2? Yeah, actually, I wanted to see um, where black's bishop was going because he might play bishop b4, he could play bishop d6, bishop e7, like all these moves are kind of possible, or bishop b6 like he played. And um, Whereas I'm not sure if I do like 100% want the bishop here, or maybe I want it on a3, or maybe I want it on like e3, like in case of uh, knight a4, bishop d6, or bishop e7, I might go bishop e3 actually. So I think I think sometimes white wants to be a little bit flexible here. <clears throat> so I don't really love rookie one just because there's like knight g4 for example, I maybe mean, bishop a5 might be annoying. I think I want to just go with bishop f3. Just cover this pawn. It's a little bit tender, but I found I used to play these positions from Black's point of view, and I found them to be kind of difficult because ultimately you have weaknesses, and if you're not able to generate any tactics, then it just gets tough, especially in like Blitz and Rapid, where you don't really have a lot of time to calculate and, and find ideas. Okay, bishop c7, so pulling back. This allows me just kind of time to develop, so I'll go rook c1. 
just keeping it simple, hitting the pawn and all right, one day we're going to get our knight to c5. I know Mitch, I started at 800, but I wanted to go through the grind. I wanted to see what it's, what it's like, you know, for everybody. Hey, Dank Janitor, thanks for following. All right, Bishop B5, that makes sense. Let's just drop the Knight in, let's not overthink it. Then we have A4, and this Bishop is actually in trouble if Black doesn't do something here. Matt McKnight, thank you for following. Welcome to the dojo, guys. Bishop e5. So I think we're just going to have to trade these bishops. But then we have this a4 threat that I guess Black didn't notice. So yeah, we'll take. We're going to go a4. Bishop e5 does drop a piece. That's right. That's right. I forgot that was the bet. guy is now hanging. <laughs> Prediction result is yes. Three hundred forty. All right, the stakes are going up. You guys are you started out a little slow today, you know. Uh, it's like 40 for the first one, now 340 at stake here. Yesterday we had some we had some high rollers, man. We had like 30,000 bets on the line. <laughs> Are we gonna take this one? Hey Bachi Boy, how's it going? Stumped on how to get better. You know, the G Robert nailed it. Play long time control games. I would say longer than this. Try to go like G30 do a lot of tactics that's right guys this was move 19 or it's actually i guess 17 or 18 when the piece piece hang happened um okay queen e7 so hitting the bishop on e2 now we don't want to just be casual here we do want to continue playing good moves i'm putting the bishop on f3 just to kind of protect the king and dominate this knight now if the knight ever jumps to either of these squares the bishop will be able to take it Oh, Robert, that makes sense. All right, rookie eight, black is trying to stay active. That makes uh, that makes sense as well. I'm gonna go. It's time to move the queen here. Let's go queen d2. And then maybe at some point we'll bring this knight back to d3 and challenge for the e-file. 
and kind of start reducing some of Black's activity. So I, I brought this up a lot in the last one, I think the first one as well. Once you're up the piece, it's really just all about simplification and uh, you just gotta keep it as simple as possible. Knight d3, rook e1, trade off the rooks, trade off the queens, extra piece, no problem. So knight d7, yeah, I'm totally happy to just trade knights here. I don't really have to think about anything else. And now I can go rook e1, it seems, and start trading off some rooks. So I'm very happy to do this as well. Oh, cool. Yeah, I like the chess book. I just think it's really big, so it's not the easiest thing to uh, to read. But I think it's a good, I think it's a good book for sure. All right, let's trade rooks. Yeah, it's all about just playing long time control games, going over your games, trying to see uh, where you went wrong, where you could have done better, and then reading books and doing some problems on the side. I also think books of annotated games are quite useful. Uh, things like the churn of books, you know, most instructive games of chess ever played, logical chess move by move. I think those are the books that can teach you how to really think about the game. Uh, Yasser Sarawan's book, Winning Chess Strategies, that one is highly recommended as well. Yeah, we could go rook take c6 here, kind of taking advantage of this tactic, but this is kind of complicated. We don't need this. <laughs> Let's just play bishop g2. This is this is the chess I would want my students to play. Just like very calm, simple. We'll make luft, no problems. We'll like trade the rooks off. We'll win the game smoothly. We don't have like a lot of time left. I mean, we're, we're okay, but... <laughs> we'll have to be... We'll have to speed it up here in just a sec. Queen f4? I don't know. I'm sure it was fine. There's a part of me that just never wants to uh, to double my pawns. <laughs> so even if it trades off all the queens and, and ends the game. Okay, h6. Well, I think we're gonna start having to win the game here somehow. Maybe start with this move. I'm just going after this pawn. Hey, when we all vote. Thanks for subscribing. <laughs> That's right, Lubby. In Blitz, you wanna keep it simple. Okay, Rook e2. Now on queen takes e6, we do have to be a little careful of rook e1 check. We have king h2, and I think we're okay. Takes, we'll take with the queen. So yeah, let's take this one. And uh, queen f5, we can go queen c8 check. All right, king h2, we're all good. Hey, thanks for the gifted sub when we all vote. Much appreciated. Oh, Bachiba, you got Soviet Chess Primer. Nice. That's a really good book. I like that one. Okay, Queen E5. Let's just trade off all the rooks. Keep this simple. Not table. 75, thank you for the raid. Welcome in, welcome in. Doing a educational rapid speed run here. 10-0. Playing all 1-D4. King's Indian, E4, E5. Okay, I'm giving this check, covering the pawn. If black goes back... We're gonna take this one and uh, keeping an eye on the counterplay and getting ready to just win the game. All right, queen e7. All right, black is holding on. Let's play this one. I'm trying to come in. As well as give this check. And now I'm going to give this check. So this one is going to force a queen trade. And then we can just very comfortably win the end game here. Classic breakthrough. And that's going to be that. Oh. 
All right, GG, Seth. Okay, and we're sticking with one D4 for the speed run. Like all one D4 here. And we're going with the Queen's Gambit. Just playing D4, C4 against everyone. Oh, we got the Shagorn. We had this, actually, I think in the first game of this series. Um, so the line I like here for Y is actually pretty simple. Just C takes D5. Hey, DM Hokey. How's it going? E3. Just defending the pawn and pre preparing to bring Knight to C3 out next. And our idea here is just to try to use our are two pawns in the center against black swan. So knight c3. Now main move is bishop b4. And then uh, white has two options there. There's bishop d2 and an a3 to kind of challenge the, the pin. But it's important for black to make this move because otherwise they're losing a lot of time here. So bishop b4, good. So yeah, we can either play this one and question the bishop or we can go uh, bishop d2. And then on take, uh, take back with the pawn. I think we go bishop d2, just develop. So obviously we're hitting the queen now. Black has to take. And uh, I like taking with the pawn here actually just to keep the center secure. If we take with the bishop, then black takes on d4. And we're going to have to be left with the isolated queen pawn. And I'm not a huge fan of those, although they can be okay. So bc to keep, uh, keep a pawn in the center. Now we've got two bishops and we've got this nice kind of central pawn chain. So the idea here is usually to push c4 and uh, and take a little bit of space in the center. c4. Now queen has to go back, either queen d6 or queen d8. Both seem pretty reasonable. Uh, and then we'll probably push d5 here and take more space. Okay, queen d7, a little bit weird because he's blocking the bishop, but maybe he wants to put the bishop on b7. In any case, let's push d5. And yeah, now we're just going to be thinking about how to continue our development here. Hey, Jackson, how's it going? So knight f3 is a big option. You can also think about knight e2 and bringing the knight to c3. That actually looks like a pretty interesting construction. So knight f3 is kind of also annoying because we're attacking the pawn. Hmm. Oh, and we can go bishop c3 as well, attacking the pawn this way. This one is kind of weak. Probably black is going knight g6, so it's not a huge deal. And anyway, we're going to have to develop our pieces so yeah to me knight f3 kind of makes sense here because we're attacking the pawn so we're kind of developing with the tempo and then if black pushes the pawn forward then we get this nice square on d4 for our knight and we kind of open the diagonal as well okay knight e4 that does allow us to take the pawn but i think we have to be at least somewhat careful here queen f5 Hitting the knight and hitting f2, we can probably go back knight f3. So I think we can get away with this one. Knight takes e5, queen moves somewhere, we go back to f3. Or d3 maybe, but I like f3 kind of more solid. Okay, if the opponent is giving a pawn, I mean, it's kind of critical to take it, you know, so... It's better not to be afraid. And if you can calculate, like, all right, it looks dangerous, but we're defending everything, then nothing to fear. Okay, knight takes d2, we'll take with the queen. Develop that, and now we want to probably get this tempo next with bishop d3. So I'm just focusing on simple development. And uh, yeah, I'm going to enjoy playing this position with an extra pawn. Now we're in the, uh, you know, the 1400 range, so people aren't going to be blundering pieces as often, although it, it probably will happen, <laughs> at least a little bit, uh, but probably going to get some blunder pawns as well. Okay, queen g4, I'm looking for any kind of trick, but I don't really see it. Just takes and then 
our stuff is hanging. So I think I'm just going to castle here, just defending the pawn economically with the king. And then we can get another tempo here with h3 if we want to. <clears throat> I don't know if we want to play h3 because then black goes queen g6, but on the queen g6 we have knight h4. So we're not really worried about this one. Okay, let's let's kick the queen. Now black has to make a choice. So queen g6, okay. Not really threatening this one because of the pin, but if I go e4 or something, then black can take. All right, I want to go knight h4. It's a double attack. And I just want to trade stuff off because I'm because we're up a pawn and we can kind of afford to uh, simplify a bit. All right, queen f6. Let's take this one. Knight takes. We could trade bishop for knight here, just have clean pawn up position. Or we can keep the bishop. I feel like actually we should keep the bishop. We can play e4 here and f4 and just get our central pawns rolling. Yeah, let's try that. Let's push this one forward. Of course it gives the d4 square, but I don't really believe this square is so annoying. Okay, knight h4. Yeah, I'm just gonna take more space here. Uh, I'm not really, actually I'm a little bit annoyed by queen d4 check. King h2, and black has nothing, but still, why are we allowing a check? <laughs> Maybe queen e3 instead? And he wants queen g6 probably to threaten checkmate. We can go g3 and we're fine. Yeah, a lot of good options. It's kind of it's kind of tough when you have a lot of good options, choosing between them. Um, let's see. Let's see, if we go queen e3 here, g3, maybe f5. Probably not worth worrying about too much. We can just push e5. Hmm. Then again, second option just to go f4. But queen d4 check, king h2, and it'll be hard to expel this queen. All right, I'm gonna go queen e3 because I don't want I don't want to be have to deal with this queen on d4. Then we gotta try to get it out of there. Your rookie yeah, yeah, I thought queen g6 was gonna happen, but okay. So let's. Um... Let's push f4. And our, our point here is that we're just trying to take space. Just we have an extra pawn, especially in the center. We have a lot of extra pawns, so it makes sense to advance and really cramp everything in black's position. Then okay, we can go rook b1, a4, we have a lot of ideas. Alright, let's not threaten checkmate. <laughs> Let's not try and checkmate. Let's not allow a checkmate. Let's go G3. Seems good. Hey Panos, how's it going? And okay, the knight is not really hanging yet, but we're gonna go King H2 next and attack it. The knight of five. I thought we might see this one. Yeah, actually, it's a very nice trick because takes, takes, 
we take the queen, they win back their piece. And, uh, or they can even take here first. Wow, nice one. I totally, I saw this move coming, but I totally underestimated it. All right. Well, let's see, do we have other options? Queen F2, black takes here. And that looks very scary. Might still be fine. Hmm, this one might be, might be tough. Okay, we have also have this option. Queen here, take e5. We hit black's queen. That actually looks kind of, that looks kind of fun for white because we'll get the open g file. Yeah, I want to keep control over this position. This one looks unclear, so I want to go for this one. Now black has a choice. They can also take with the queen. Then we'll take, knight takes, and we'll go rookie one. Defending the pawn and then king g2, kicking the knight. Good thing we had an extra pawn so we can afford to uh, to give one back. I feel like I must have messed up here. All right, takes, and then we'll go rookie one. Should probably speed up a bit. But I still like our position because uh, of the pawn. I like the big center. That said, black can be black can be pretty annoying here with like knight h5. Okay, c6. That gives us time to uh, bring the king in. I think maybe slightly missed opportunity not to play this one earlier because now, now we're able to defend the pawn with our king and we weren't forced to uh, advance f5. Now our next move here is going to be um, e5. If allowed. Just to completely kill this knight. Alright. Smart mode, knight f6. Let's um let's bring the rook in. A5. Let's fix that. Now we have like clear weakness to attack on the B file. Black is playing really well, but for the most part, but now like these last couple moves have really weakened the position. Oh, rook c6 allows knight takes d5. Important not to blunder that. So let's go here first. And then we'll go rook c6 once it's, if it's safe. Yeah, now we come in. Now I, I'm starting to really like our position because we're getting uh, some strong pawns here. Yeah, let's take with bishop. Taking with pawn, I'm sure, is also good. And then we'll um, tie black down to this one. Now I'm attacking here. Rook b8 probably forced, and now we're gonna... So see, we kind of see like the power of the bishop over the knight. This <laughs> turned out to be a really instructive endgame. I wish I had more time uh, so that I could, I could slow down <laughs> on my moves here, but kind of running out of time, so we're just gonna have to win it, win it by hand. My day is going pretty well, Jackson. Thank you for asking. How about you guys? How's your days all going? How's your day? How are your days all going? That's probably it. All right, let's push this one. And now we're gonna promote on whatever square the knight doesn't touch. We'll promote on that one. So if they go 96, we'll push e8. If they go nothing, then we'll go d8. Yeah, turn out into pretty instructive bishop versus knight position, actually. That's kind of cool. Oh, you guys have one month quarantine in Greece? Ongoing or is it like starting soon? <clears throat> we're like, we're about to start a uh, curfew in California tomorrow, actually. No one's allowed outside after 10 p.m. 
Hey, chess coach Brian. Thanks for following. Good time to follow. All right, king f7. Let's promote on d8. Hmm. Yeah, the lockdown's been so crazy. It's like the whole world has been changing. Okay, 96. We have a lot of ways to win here, but let's um let's just pin the knight so we can take it. And it won't bother us anymore. And we'll try to set up a quick checkmate. If GF4, probably fastest way is rook g1. Queen takes. Thanks, Brian. Appreciate it. I'm hoping it's instructive. And we got mate in two. Takes and takes. Best way to look for mates is always the face-to-face -face checkmate. Just put the queen in front of the king, make sure it's defended. And it's GG. All right, back to d4. Queen's gambit. So far, we've seen a lot of queen's gambit accepted. Okay, bishop f5. And then we'll take this one. So when they don't defend the pawn on d5 with a pawn, then I think it's important just to take the pawn and get two pawns in the center. We're just going to play knight c3 here and e4 and capture the center. Baltic defense, yeah. Just taking our center, we're going to develop our pieces and run with it. Okay, e6. Hmm. Interesting. So, one drawback of bringing the bishop out super early is that it does allow white to kind of play this early queen b3 and target this one. I think I'm going to do that. That seems like a really annoying move for black because they have to defend this guy, maybe play b6, weaken the light squares. We're going to do the speed run, I don't know, 2200, 2400. We'll see. I'm planning to play the uh, US Championship qualifier next Sunday. It's going to be 10 0. So hopefully we can get our rating up before then. <laughs> okay, Knight of Six. Oh boy, allowing us to take here. Win some material. I think we're going to. I think we're going to do that. Do we not only hit the rook, we also defend this guy? Now I'm tempted to go bishop b5 or e5. So black's next move is going to be rook b8. So I'm a little bit worried about having to defend this uh, e4 pawn. Yeah, let's go e5. Well, I'm trying to get used to the time control. Working my way up through the ratings. <laughs> G4.
Hey, chess coach Brian, thanks for the donation. Okay, this move I definitely don't believe in because this knight is just gonna get chased, but I think it's actually better to just ignore the knight because it's not really bothering us and just focus on the development here with bishop b5. Bishop b7, yeah, we have an option we can take. Force black to take with the king. Queen takes, this rook will be hanging. Kind of feels feels pretty nice. The other move we can play is queen c6 and tie black down to the knight. Make it hard for them to castle. I kind of like that more actually. Now black is going to have to solve some issues, maybe playing like rook b8, rook b6. Alright, bishop b4. Now I'm tempted to just continue developing uh, actively, bishop g5. And at some point we're just going to be looking for for a clean knockout. Okay, f6, that means we can take here. We also take on f6 first. Queen takes e6, there's no drawback. If queen e7, we're taking on d7 for free. Oh, g4 is also hanging. Oh boy, a lot of a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff hanging for black in this position. Let's see if we take knight takes, queen takes, king f8. Probably we have pretty strong attack there, 95 and so on. So we take here first. Also looks good. Yeah, what to do guys? So many good options once again. Just gotta pick something and go with it, I guess. Take. Take. I think I'm going to grab one of these knights. Alright, bishop e7. I'm gonna keep it real simple. I'm just gonna take this guy. Black will probably take here. And then I think I'm gonna push e6, win this piece. Probably we got something even better. But this seems simple enough. Oh, actually, I really want to keep black from castling. But queen e6, bishop f7. Mm, we're kind of getting kicked here. Bishop f7. Oh, then we can go e6. So here, knight b6 probably. Bishop goes back. Black's position's not fun, but we could also just win a piece. So... That seems pretty good too. Yeah, let's play for the initiative, actually, <laughs> you know, because I was thinking e6, castles, takes, rook f4. It's annoying. It's annoying. Okay, h5. We're going to come in. Now we're hitting this one. So see, we could have taken the piece, but we chose the initiative and we won the game in three moves. And David's saying, how come you didn't take the piece? Well, you would have still been playing, David. That's why. <laughs> I don't know. I believe in the initiative.
Oh, the guy disconnected. Probably just has bad internet, you know, bad luck. GG.